History of Play would like to welcome you to a special live stream performance of Challenger, Soaring with Krista McCollum, featuring the life of the teacher in space and educational pioneer. Please note, no video recording or reproduction of this performance is permitted. Journey through Krista's life in this immersive program. Performance approved by the McCollum and Corrigan families was made possible in part due to the generosity of the Bob Jolly Charitable Trust. Even Krista's sister, Lisa, states, when we closed our eyes and listened, it was as though Krista were in the room with us. Challenger is presented by History at Play. Founded by Judith Calaora in 2010, History at Play chronicles the lives of influential and often forgotten women. Judith is a professional actress, writer, living historian, and educator. She graduated from Syracuse University and completed the Globe Education Program at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre of London. After the program, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions, and for more information, you can follow History at Play on social media using the handle History at Play, and can visit historyatplay.com. And now, we invite you to enjoy Challenger, Soaring with Krista McCollum. Every month, 2,000 American soldiers are dying in Vietnam. Four students are shot dead by the United States National Guard in Kent State. Martin Luther King Jr. is gunned down in Memphis, Tennessee. And Bobby Kennedy is assassinated in Los Angeles. I guess you could say I learned an awful lot about the world in these years. I start to develop a healthy, distrust in authority. I guess I start hoping that I can change the world. Welcome students. I 
know that it's a little bit unusual for us to be using a corner of the library as our classroom, but we're going to make the best of it. So I want to welcome all of you to this class. And we start all of our classes off with a name game. So I expect you all to confidently know the names of your fellow classmates and to also confidently know my name. My name is Mrs. McAuliffe, and it's spelled M-C capital A-U-L-I-F-F-E. And if you incorrectly spell my name, I will deduct points from your final grade. We have a classroom based on mutual respect. And I ask only two things of you. I ask you to be yourselves. And I ask you to do the best that you can. I am never going to say to you, oh, you're a C student in English. You're never going to be a poet. No. You have to dream. We all have to dream. Dreaming is Okay. I'm being really brave and probably insane, but I am taking two of my classes on an all-day field trip to the FBI building. I know, I'm taking two of my better classes. I have classes that I wouldn't even take into another classroom, and I don't want to stop there. There are so many historic places for us to see right here around Washington, D.C. I take my students 188 of them on an all-day field trip to Gettysburg. Doesn't that sound fun? I'm going to take my students on field trips to Williamsburg. Uh, I'm going to take my students on field trips to Jamestown. I'm going to take my students on a field trip to Washington, D.C. for an entire week. I want my students to learn from experience. I bring guests into our classroom. I bring my students to prison so that they can see what it's like to be incarcerated in our prison system today. I bring my students to court so they can watch my husband Steve while he tries his case in court. I want my students to learn as much from seeing and from doing as they learn from listening and from reading. So what do you think of that new teacher, Kristen McAuliffe? You mean the queen of the field trips? I admire her, I guess. I just wish the kids weren't always late coming back to class. The queen of the field trips. Great. A nickname I'm going to have to live with, I guess. Nineteen seventy-three. Desegregation of these students. Students are taken to unfamiliar schools. They have no choice as to where they will go. I understand that you're upset. And I would be upset too if. I was being taken out of my school in the middle of the class year. But I want to promise you that you're going to find a teacher at your new school who trusts you and who believes in you just like I do. And I got you something so that when you go to your new school, you'll have something to remember me by. I got you a brand new notebook. 
And on the cover of the notebook, I wrote your name. And on the first page, I wrote my most favorite quote in all of the world. It says, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with success. Henry David Thoreau. I want you to have fun at your new school. And I promise you, I promise you that I am going to come in a few weeks' time. I am going to go to your new school. And I am going to meet with your teachers. And I'm going to talk to your teachers. And I'm going to make sure your teachers believe in you. And they trust you. Just like I do. But you're the only teacher who makes me watch television. I love to watch the game shows and then I analyze the commercials for your homework. What other teacher will let me do that? I can't promise to know what your other teachers are going to assign for you to do, but I can promise you that you're going to be okay. I promise you, no matter what, and no matter what school you're attending, and no matter who your classmates are, or where they're forcing you to go, or what bus they're putting you in. I promise you, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. I am destroyed by watching my students being ripped out of my classroom. In the middle of the class year, I can't any, even start a new unit because the students that are being shipped into our schools have none of the pre-existing education or curriculum that I have provided to my students over the past six months. And this is all in the name of desegregation. They're ripping these students out of their schools. They're ripping them out of this school in Lamlin, Maryland. Thomas Johnson School, half my students are ripped out of the class and are brought into white communities. And for what? All of their friends, they're all together here. We're all together here. I am their educator and I have established a relationship with them. And now all of them are being ripped away from me, brought to places that they don't want to go and being put in the classrooms with teachers who resent the fact that they have to start teaching their school year from the beginning halfway through. You can't just pick up kids from one school and drop them off in another and, and it's like they'll all be okay. We develop a relationship with our students. And when you take those students away from us, it damages much more than just their education. It can damage their entire lives. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Krista McAuliffe, and this is a little bit of a, an, a clip and an ad lib of a program about my life called Challenges, Soaring with Krista McAuliffe. And in the first few moments of our Q&A, I would really love and introduce um, myself to you as being able to answer questions that you might have for me. But please do remember that my, um, my knowledge is limited to anything that happens before 1986. So please do frame your questions in a way that I will be able to answer them. And then if you have questions from a more contemporary nature, I will absolutely answer them um, with my alter ego's uh, voice in my head in a, little bit of, in a little bit of time. So let me uh, get a little seat to sit on here and I'll take some of your questions. Make sure you write them down now because they do take a moment to populate inside the chat box. But I look forward to answering all of your questions.
right. So let's see what we got today. Yeah, are there technical difficulties? Oh no, really? Were you able to see? I'm using a uh, Zoom so that you can see my screen, so you could see the the uh, the images on the, the computer screen. Were you not able to see any of that? I've recorded this, so I will put the recording up on um, Facebook as well, so that you'll be able to see the recording in the event that there was a technical snafu. Um, sometimes when Zoom goes live to Facebook, it can be a little bit. Um, tricky and it's not always as uh, secure as we would hope it would be. So I see some questions coming in now. So what subjects and grades do I teach? So I teach, well right now um, the year that I am presenting is 1973. That's when we had the desegregation that was occurring in the school systems. And they were busing students in the Maryland and uh, greater Washington, D.C. Era, uh, area all over to different schools to try to desegregate. And um, at that point, I was teaching in, in at Lamlin, um, Maryland, Thomas Johnson Middle School. So I was teaching lots of different subjects, um, but mostly my focus is on social studies. So I am a history teacher. Um, when I moved to Concord, New Hampshire, which I'm going to do in um, 1978, actually during the blizzard of 1978, believe it or not, which was a really good time to move. Um, once I go to uh, Clonkett, New Hampshire, I, I teach at uh, a June, Runlet Junior High School for one year, but then I switch over to Clonkett High School. And when I'm teaching at Clonkett High School, I'm teaching history, and I'm teaching government, and I'm teaching law, and then I'm also invited to create my own class, which I do the following year, uh, which is called The American Woman. And it, it goes through all of our American history from the American Revolution, talking about the camp followers, the women who were falling behind the continental soldiers, and they were you know, they were fixing up their, their mending their uniforms, they were cooking, they were tending to their wounds and their sicknesses. And then um, we work all the way up through modern day time. So we talk about the space age, for example, who's the, fair, the very first American woman to go into space. You can write it in the comments if you know the answer to it. I will be glad to wait for it and I can give you a prize. Um, but uh, the, that's the, the, the topics that I teach, the subjects that I teach in school. It's mostly history um, and then some law. I also, I passed the New Hampshire bar exam, so I always had it in the back of my mind that maybe I would someday pursue a, 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 a career in some, in legal education or in law. My husband is a, is a district attorney in Concord, New Hampshire, so um, I've always had an interest in it. I've always loved to follow his cases. How many, how many years was I teaching and was it in the same school or in different ones? So I think I answered that a little bit about the different schools that I taught in. So um, I actually, I uh, graduated from Framingham State University uh, in 19, it would be 1970, then 80, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, and then I, I got married the following year, or right after that actually, my husband Steve and I got married and we um, traveled down to Landland, Maryland, because my husband had um, was he had gone to VMI to the Virginia Military Institute, and he was um, at that point still in the army. So he was still doing his stint. He had like a two-year stint in the army. So I went down with him to find a job in the D.C. area, the greater D.C. area, which was Landland, Maryland. So that was my first school, um, and then run the junior high, and then uh, Clonkett High School. Um, but, and I also I taught at Bow Memorial for one for a little bit of time as well. So three or four three or four schools over the course of my career. Sally Ride, good job, Andrea. Excellent job. Oh, Andrea, you've already gotten a prize, but I will send you something else if you want. <laughs> Happy to do so. Um, any other questions for any other questions for me for Krista?
All right, so if there are questions for me, you can feel free to keep asking. I'm going to introduce my alter ego. Um, my name is Judith Kalaora. I am the Artistic Director of History at Play, and uh, we are an immersive living history performance troupe. We travel all over the United States of America and um, create these one-woman and ensemble programs that chronicle the lives of influential and often forgotten women. I am terribly sorry to hear that there were some technical difficulties um, going from screen sharing, um, which is what we were doing, so that you could see some of the um, montage of the photos from the performance. Going screen sharing back to live can always be a little bit um, jarring, and sometimes when you're on Zoom and going live to Facebook, it is even um, more clinky, as is what I call it, clunky and clinky. So um, nevertheless, I appreciate you bearing with me. I did record this one, and in the event that there were some live issues, um, broadcast streaming issues, I wanted to make sure that I could put it up on the Facebook page as a clean copy. So I will do that. Um, I will do that after we get off of the off of the Hap and Chat today. So um, we have just one more week of Hap and Chat. What I've started to do with Hap and Chat is. Um, not only am I doing just a little snippet, a very tiny little piece of uh, what is actually about an 80 minute performance, but I'm also ad-libbing a little bit to bring out certain aspects of these women's lives who um, experience things that perhaps we may be experience right now, experiencing ourselves right now in the current political and um, societal um, climate that we're enduring. So uh, Krista was really uh, bothered in her letters to her mother. She is very vocal about how she thought it was really wrong to break up neighborhoods and to break up groups of friends and to break up uh, established educator-student relationships. Um, she was always uh, spearheading the fight for the underrepresented or unrepresented. She was incredibly... Um, non-prejudicial prejudicial, prejudicial, and was very hard on people who did express racial or sex, sexual orientation prejudices or religious prejudices. She has this wonderful um, anecdote that her sister Lisa talks about where her sister Lisa had made some sort of comment about a guy with really long hair and said, oh, that guy looks grungy, that guy looks dirty. And Krista looked at her sister, Lisa, and she said, you know, Lisa, I would expect better from you. I would expect you not to judge someone based on the length of their hair. And I always just love that uh, anecdote because I think it really shows that, you know, Krista was a woman from, from the very get-go, from her upbringing in Framingham, Massachusetts. She was blind to race. She was blind to, uh, to religion. She was blind to, you know, differences in opinions as well. She always wanted to, to talk about people's points of view. And all of her students say that she was a really tough teacher, but a really fair teacher. And I think that's the best type of educator to be, is someone who's really tough, but who's also really fair. So it's not easy to do, but um, you know, a lot of us, uh, we, we look to Crystal McAuliffe as a role mo model. A lot of us remember exactly where we were when she was, when she was very tragically um, killed on board the Challenger shuttle in 1986. So um, this is uh, a little bit of a mix of, you know, some of her words off the script and some of her words off the cuff. And of course, uh, of course, Andrea, um, we always remember Krista. I grew up in Framingham, Massachusetts, which is where Krista grew up. I was attending, you know, the school that was very close to the Krista McAuliffe Public Library and was always really involved in her life because a lot of my teachers were also her classmates in college and also applied to be the teacher in space, which of course was the program in 1985-1986 sponsored by the Reagan administration to bring a civilian into space for the very first time. So uh, none of the live performance, it froze, saw none of the, it froze during the photos. All right, well, I will, um, Michelle, I will put up a copy of it. So don't worry, I apologize. It, there's, uh, you know, that's why I record it. I record the, the uh, Happen Chats and that's why I record performances, just to make sure that they go onto Facebook and can be watched appropriately. Because it's always difficult with uh, technology. But I appreciate your candor. Thank you for letting me know. So, uh, any other questions? All right, so I'm going to... I'm going to make sure I load this back up right after we're done. So we have one more week of Happen Chat. 
which is next week, and then we'll be announcing some really interesting and unique opportunities for you to talk to the influential and often forgotten women portrayed by the history of play True. We're starting to see that there is an uptick in folks wanting live stream performances, which is wonderful, and also an uptick of folks who are planning to have in-person events later this year and into next year, which is also really good. So I want to say our tradition always on Happen Chat ding, is that we do give out a prize, and today our winner is Spencer Allen Van Herrick. So, Spencer, I think I missed a, a letter in your last name. There should be an I. I see that now. Spencer Valen, Allen Van Herrick, um, if you can please uh, direct message me your snail mail address, you get a uh, couple of things. You get information about this program, which will be on our paper hap uh, live stream on June 19th. So, not this weekend. Uh, but next weekend. And you'll also get a <clears throat> pass to enjoy a paper hat performance for free, complimentary, and when you do have access to paper hat, you can also access the bonus materials, which are usually primary source information that we post on the page throughout the week about the um, the story that was being uh, per portrayed for you that day. So you can also have access to all of the last 14 weeks of paper haps that we have all of the primary source information is on the paper hap page um, with the tag education so you can have access to all of that Spencer and you'll also get a cool history at play sticker and you'll get a signed headshot and um, uh, that will be uh, your prize so Spencer definitely let me know your um, your snail mail address and I'll get that out to you right away sir and uh, otherwise Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're nearing the end of the, of the Happen Chat uh, series. It's been a real, really a pleasure just to kind of be able to explore and to experiment with the audience in uh, including different aspects of the performances and then kind of going off the cuff. So I hope you've enjoyed the experience. I look forward to presenting new opportunities for you to meet and converse with the women of history at play. And we look forward to continuing to produce our new programming, which is female athletes, and also Princess Diana. So we've got those two coming up in the next uh, year or so. So thank you so very much. Excellent. Um, I'm going to put the, the recorded version up right now so you can all just watch it. Thank you, Rick. And uh, again, I apologize for any of the technical difficulties. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure we do right by that, and we'll make sure that we get that up on here for you. It is something to do with Zoom. Yes. John, yes, Dad, yes, it is. Um, all right, great. Thank you so very much, ladies and gents. I hope you have a safe and healthy week. And please do promise me that you will make history. Take care, be well, and be kind. And I'll talk to you soon.